Okay, so next up in this video, we're going to be working on our footer. Now, this is a pretty simple footer. It's going to consist of the navigation, which is going to be the same navigation we have here in our header. And then we're going to be doing a social media section here. So we're going to be getting all these icons from Font Awesome. And then we're going to wrap it up with a copyright information here with our company name. Now, if we inspect this and check how it looks on mobile, we can scroll down here. And we're going to be using the property of Flex Wrap to have the items go on to the next line once they run out of room. So, like I said, a pretty simple footer. So let's head over to our index.html and get started. To begin, we're going to start with a comment here. So let's go ahead and say footer. Now we're going to be using a footer HTML, uh, HTML5 tag here. So we're going to go ahead and create that. And then inside of here, we're going to create a div with a class of container. So we're going to say div.container. All right. Now inside of here, we're going to create our first UL for our navigation. And we're going to give this a class of flex row. Now, since we went ahead and already created our list items for this, we're going to head up here to our header and inside our navigation, we're going to simply copy this and then paste it inside of our flex row here. All right, so for our next flex row, we want to go ahead and create another UL. This is going to be for our font awesome icons and we're gonna give this a class of flex row. And inside of here, we're going to have list items as well. And we're going to have each one contain an icon from Font Awesome. So what we're going to do is I'm going to type out the class here. So the first one's going to have a class of FAB, and then it's going to be FA dash YouTube. Okay. Now for the rest of them, I'm going to copy and paste them in. Now you can go ahead and grab these from the code pen that's going to be in the description below. And we're going to paste in the rest of them. So we're going to be using Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and also Dribble. Okay. And then lastly here for our markup, just below our flex row, we're going to create a paragraph tag here, and that's not a paragraph tag. And there we go. And inside of here, we're going to have our copyright information. So to get the copyright icon, we can simply say and, and then type out copy. And then we can use a semicolon here to finish it, and that will give us the copyright icon. And we're gonna say 20, tw not 2030, 2020 new biz. All right, so that's going to do it for our markup here. Let's go ahead and check out how this looks. And as you can see here, we're left with this from our markup. So let's head over to our style sheet and begin to style up our footer. All right, so let's go ahead and begin with a comment here and we're gonna say footer. And then let's go ahead and open up our footer tag. Now to begin inside our footer tag, we're going to give everything inside of our footer a color of white. So we're gonna say color and then the pound sign and FFF for white. And then we're going to give this a background color of 004A99. Next up, we want to target our container. So we're gonna say container. And we're going to set the container here in this section to display flex. So display and then flex. We want to set the flex direction of this to column. And then we want to align all the items to the center. Okay, next up, we want to then go ahead and look at our ULs, which are right here. And we want to style these uh, a few different ways. So we already have display flex on there. So we're going to say UL and we want to put a margin bottom on our ULs of 32 pixels to separate them from each other. Then we want to put the property of flex wrap and set that to wrap so that when the viewport gets smaller, that each item will wrap onto a new line. Now for those new lines, we want to justify the content to the center, okay? That will be all for the ULs here. Now moving along, we're going to target our LIs and simply what we want to do here is give each one a padding of zero on the top and bottom, 15 on the left and right, and then set a margin bottom on here to 16 pixels. And that's just going to help when they do go to a new line, they're not gonna be on top of each other, so there's a little bit of extra room uh, when they go to that new line when we shrink our viewport. Now, we want to then target our anchor tags here, and we're gonna give these a font size of 14 pixels. We want to set the font weight to be a little bit heavier, and we're gonna give that font weight of 500. There we go. And since we set the color up here to white, we still need to do it here on the anchor tag because by default, this will have a color of that like purple and we don't want that. So to get rid of that, we're also gonna set the color down here to white as well. Next up, we want to target our eye tag here and we're going to give this a cursor of a pointer. 
and then simply a, oops, wrong, get outside of the semicolon there, and then simply a font size of 30 pixels to increase the size of our icons. And then lastly here, we want to go ahead and set the text aligned to the center. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. And as you can see, the only thing we need to fix is we did not add our default padding to our footer. So let's head back here and go all the way to the top where we have our padding. And let's go ahead and add the footer tag. And that should go ahead and do it. And there we go, we are left with our footer. Now let's go ahead and inspect this to make sure everything works properly. So we should see down here when in mobile, we should have a few of the link tags and icons on a new line depending on the viewport and as we get bigger they go ahead and go back to the line they were on as soon as they have enough room okay so that's going to do it for this section and video next up we're going to work on smooth scrolling for our navigation when we click on a link it'll go ahead and smooth scroll to that section and then we also need to work on our mobile navigation so we're going to get to all that here in the next video